Canadians want to know. Well, I, You're the nine million dollar man. They want to know what the value is for Canadians, sir. Keep your bags packed and in that new place. Conservatives are going to fire you. Thanks, Mr. Barrett. We're going to go to Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair and Committee. First of all, good afternoon, and let me start by commending this committee for taking up this matter. When governments sell and buy official residence involving millions of dollars, parliamentary scrutiny is completely understandable. At a time when many Canadians, and including many Americans, are facing housing challenges, they have the right to know why and how decisions are made to buy and sell official accommodations. Canadians have the right to know if these transactions result in value for money and how or if they advance Canadians' interests. And parliamentarians are the right people to pose those questions and to get those answers, and I hope to be helpful in that endeavor today. I have the honor of leading Canada's Consulate General in New York, a role that I took up on February 27th, 2023. This is one of Canada's most significant diplomatic posts. It is responsible for five states, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and Delaware, and also the island of Bermuda. This region has a combined GDP of more than $6 trillion and two-way trade with Canada of more than $200 billion a year. Rien qu'à New York, il y a environ 300 000 résidents. In New York alone, there are 300,000 Canadians resident. Our consulate provides for them government services that are essential, including emergency consular service. Of the American media capital, where opinions that Americans have of Canada are often formed and created and amplified. Mon travail englobe tous ces aspects et bien plus encore. My work includes all these aspects and even more. The consulate is there to promote and defend Canadian interests, for example, in terms of trade and investment, and deals with various bilateral questions. Um, at the municipal level, the state level, and the federal government level. Tools to do the job. I am assigned a residence, both to live and to use for work. That means using it for certain types of meetings, receptions, and dinners. It is Canada's house in New York. Since I arrived... I have held 38 events at the residence. Most recently, last week, I had a reception for New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy and his delegation on the eve of their trade and political mission to Canada with visits uh, to Ontario and Quebec. Other events, such as dinners, have centered around venture capital, private equity, uh, political outreach, AI, public policy, and the arts. As you have already heard in testimony from Global Affairs Canada officials, I had no role whatsoever in either deciding to sell the former residence or buying the new one. That was completely undertaken by the Property Bureau in Ottawa. I was not involved in the selection of the new property, its amenities, or its location. And as you have heard, this project will return millions of dollars to Canadian taxpayers, which I'm sure all of you think is a good thing. I also want to let you know why I was unavailable uh, on August 27th when you first invited me to speak with you. I was on leave with my children and my grandchildren. I am very pleased that the committee and thankful to the committee to accommodate my appearance today. Finally, I would like to tell you why I accepted this job as Consul General in the first place. After a 45-year career in broadcasting and five years as a senior business executive, I was looking for an opportunity to give back because I believe that anyone who has done well because of Canada, or in my case, because of Canadians, should give something back to the country that gave them so much. This job allows me to do just that, using my experience and my personal networks in the service of Canada. I am extremely proud of the work my team here in New York does for Canadians, advancing and protecting their interests every single day. 
Mr. Chairman, I now look forward to answering any questions that the members may have. Thanks, Mr. Clark. We'll start with uh, Mr. Barrett for six minutes, please. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Clark, how long were you residing in the old residence? Uh, how long was I residing? Well, from the time I arrived, February 27th, 2023, until today. The listing for that property describes it as a masterpiece. Is that right? Is that how it's described? I know nothing about real estate. Uh, well, you're here to talk about it today, so I hope you've, you're prepared to turn your mind to it. The Prime Minister visited you in New York City on April 27th uh, of, of that year that you moved in. Is that right? I believe that's correct. He was here on a mission. Yeah. Did you host the Prime Minister in the residence? I did. Did you show him around? Around the residence? No. Yeah. No, you didn't show him around. Um, what did he comment on the on the the look of it? No. So, um, but to confirm that on April 27th, uh, you and the prime minister were in the residence that was deemed unfit for you to continue living in. That's correct. You were there April 27th. Yeah. Along with about 80 other people. And on April 28th, you were in the, in the limo with him in New York. Is that right? The next day? That's correct. So were there any conversations regarding renovations, upgrade, moving, uh, the, uh, the, uh, former occupants of that condo, um, or you now occupying it, any change in uh, discussions regarding um, which representative in New York was occupying that space? Did that come up at all? None whatsoever. So we have government documents that detail how talks on getting a new residence intensified immediately after the prime minister visited you. You asked him for a new place. Is that right? That's incorrect. So you're in the motorcade with the prime minister after he was just in this place that's deemed unfit for you to continue to live in. And you never said, look, buddy, thanks for the job. Um, I could new use a new jeweled onyx powder room and a handcrafted copper tub. No, I did not. How much representational space is there in the new residence? representational space would represent the majority of the space in the new residence. Okay. That's interesting. So the dining room, living room, jeweled onyx powder room come to about 860 square feet. Does that sound about right to you? That's what the listing says. I, I have no idea about square feet. I would refer you to the property division okay. at uh, Global Affairs. Who so, handles so that leaves about 2,700 square feet for your personal use. 860 for representational, 2700 for your personal use. So Canadians are on the hook for paying $9 million for 860 square feet when a perfectly good joint representational space is available at the same property that you're you're joining us at from today. Is that right? I, I, I Your numbers can't be right because that does not represent reality. Okay, so what is the percentage of representational space in the new location? Uh, please bring us that back to reality. A question, that, uh, that is a question, Mr. Chair, that should be addressed to the property division at Global Affairs Canada. Well, you had a, a great deal of certainty to tell me that I'm wrong, but you certainly don't know on what basis I, I am. I'm referring to exactly the documents that were provided to us by the department that you're now referring me to. Gax real estate agent told us that you personally visited the new luxury condo once the selection had been made. Was this a final vetting? Not at all. It was after the offer had been made to buy it that I first saw it. Did you ever take a moment as someone who spent a career in journalism to question the prime minister or anyone on the opulence of this location amid the backdrop of the cost of living crisis that we're facing here in Canada stats can saying that one in four Canadians are going to be using food banks to feed themselves and their families this month. Did that ever occur to you? As I said in my opening statement, Mr. Chair, I am well aware of the challenges being faced by both Canadians and Americans when it comes to housing. In this case, I was not involved in any way, shape, or form in the decision to buy this new residence or sell the old residence, uh, and that is entirely in the hands of the property division of Global Affairs. When you host, when you host functions at the event, uh, do you personally prepare the food? Is it done by your personal chef, or are these events catered? I do not have a personal chef, nor do I cook the food, thankfully.
So it's so these are catered affairs because we were told by the real property division that the necessity for this was that um, the shared space uh, that you have uh, at the office that you're in now wasn't suitable to host functions because there wasn't a kitchen to prepare meals. So if the if the meals are being brought in, couldn't they be brought into your office that you're speaking to us from now? The bylaws of New York City prohibit us from having a working kitchen in the office. It would be illegal, in fact, for us to put a working kitchen in this office. If it's catered, uh, it, se- it seems moot whether or not you have a kitchen in there. Um, so the, we, we've been told that you're responsible for all of the trade success between Canada and the United States. Can you tell us exactly, just the number, how much trade business you have generated for Canada. Just the number, sir. First of all, uh, Mr. Chair, Fair I number. don't know where or who said that I was responsible for all the trade between Canada okay. and well, the United I, States. Since you don't have the number, I'm out of time. Uh, Canadians want to know. Well, you're I, the $9 million man. They want to know what the value is for Canadians. Sir, keep your bags packed and in that new place. Conservatives are going to fire you. Thanks, Mr. Barrett. We're going to go to Mr. 